Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to jump right into adding fractions. We are in our home links, uh, unit five, lesson three. And uh, the thing about adding fractions that you have to remember is as long as the denominators are the same, all we have to worry about are the numerators, the top numbers. Case in point, let's take a look at problem number one. It says solve the number stories, use a different strategy for each one. Number one says the park department wants to have new trees planted. They agreed that one-tenth of the trees will be oak, three-tenths will be pine, and two-tenths will be willow. They are undecided about the rest. What fractions of the trees will be oak, willow, or pine? Now, since this is a number story, I'm going to uh, utilize my favorite number story strategy, which is, of course, ruckus, which is I'm going to reread the problem, and as I do, I'm going to underline the question, circle important information, come up with an action plan, and yes, solve it. So let's go again. The park department wants to have new trees planted. They agreed that one-tenth of the trees will be oak, three-tenths of the trees will be pine, and two-tenths will be willow. They are undecided about the rest. What fraction of the trees will be oak, willow, or pine? Okay, so I've got my question. What fraction will be oak, willow, or pine? So this tells me that I need to add all three amounts of trees together to get my fraction, okay? Now, like I said, when we're adding fractions, the first thing we need to do is check to make sure that the denominators are the same. And as you can see, all the denominators of my fractions are 10, okay, or tenths. So that means we are adding like denominators, which means we don't have to uh, worry about equal equivalence, at least not right now. Later on uh, in your school year, you will be worried about equivalence. Okay, but that's for another day, right? So really, all we have to do is ask ourselves, what's 1 plus 3 plus 2? Okay, 1 plus 3 plus 2, because those are the numerators. So 1 tenth plus 3 tenths plus 2 tenths equals an unknown. And let's say t for trees, right? Well, you've already probably done the mental math in your head as I was writing it out. 1 plus 3 plus 2 is, of course, 6 tenths. Okay? 6 over 10, because 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. So 6 tenths of the trees are oak willow, or pine. Okay, so all I did here was I took my numerators and I added them together. Okay, so it says one way to solve a fraction addition problem would be just to add the numerators. Another way we could approach it is to actually draw a picture of those fractions. Okay, so I could draw a picture of a box, and then a second box, and then a third box, like so. And then each of these boxes can be divided into tenths. And then I can just color in the fractional amounts and can then count them. So for example, one-tenth, Three tenths, and then two tenths. One plus three plus two would give me a total of six tenths. So all I'd have to do is just count the parts, right? Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the last part, which is fill in the whole box. Well, what's this whole business? Well. We're just talking about units. When we talk about what is the whole, okay, we're talking about trees. That's what we're looking at, okay? 
Now, when it's not in a story problem or number sentence or number story or however you want to phrase it, uh, and we're just straight up computing like we do down here on problems three through six, again, the process is the same. We have to look at the denominators to make sure that they're all the same. And then if they're all the same, which they are, all we have to do is just add the top numbers, the numerators. Okay, so let's look at problem number four. One half plus three half equals blank. Okay, so my denominators are the same as, right? So all I have to do is look at my numerators. One plus three, of course, it's going to give me four. Four halves. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but wait, Mr. Wasman, that's impossible. You can't have four halves. Well, yes and no. Four halves is what we call an improper fraction. Now, technically, that's a correct answer. But when we're thinking about four halves, it's easier for us to think about it as two wholes. Okay? So here are four halves. So if I take two circles, actually, let's make it three circles, and I cut them each in half, right? Because one of my fractions is one half. This one. And then my other fraction represents three halves. Now, three halves would take up one whole and then the half of a second circle. So right here, I've got my one half. And then I've got my one and one half total. Okay. So if I add my one half to my one half like that, and I consolidated them like so. Now I have another one whole, right? So I've got my one here, and I've got my one over here. One plus one is, of course, two. But it also is four halves, right? Here's a half, here's a half, here's a half, here's a half. There's four of them, okay? So four halves is correct, but as an improper fraction, it's easier to think about it in terms of wholes. Sometimes you will get a, uh, a whole number with no fractional leftovers. Sometimes you'll get what's called a mixed number. All right, finally, let's take a look at these practice problems, because again, they took the time to print these and come up with them for you. You should at least take a look at them if not complete them. And of course they're all review to kind of prime the pump to get you thinking about stuff later on down the road. Represent the fractions as decimals. Okay, well anytime I hear the word decimals, I think money, right? Because that's the most common way we come into contact with decimals when we're looking at prices of things. Every time you go into a store, there's a dollar amount and a, and a cent amount for the price of a product. So when I hear the word four tenths, my brain immediately switches to dimes. How much money is four dimes? Because a tenth of a dollar is a dime. So if I have four tenths, that would be the same as saying 0 0.4 or 0 0.40. Four dimes is the same as 40 pennies, which is four tenths of a dollar, right? So I could represent that amount with 0 0.4 or 0 and 4 tenths, or I could say it's 0 and 40 hundredths. Mathematically, they are equivalent. So some of these concepts are review. Some of these concepts are brand new. All of these concepts are well within the expertise of your math teacher. So if you have any questions about any of these problems, feel free to reach out to your math teacher because they are there to help you ask the questions. They can only answer the questions that have been asked, so don't suffer in silence if you still don't get it. Otherwise, friends, I hope this uh, video was helpful for you, and until we meet again, good luck. Thanks.